All right, so now we got the car up in the air. It's really straightforward to get up in the air. It's, it's high enough off the ground at this point anyway to be able to get you know, the lift under there. Uh, it's really conventional, just you know, the, the jacking points are easy to get to. And we lifted the car up in the air and frankly, there's not a lot to look at. Yeah, what you have under this car is just all aerodynamic panels. With a lot of EVs and a lot of modern auto design, it's all about aerodynamics. And air flowing over the top of the car is just as important as the air flowing underneath the car. So if you look, everything is kind of just sealed up. And this is easy to do with our Tesla because right here is our batteries. So you don't have any other conventional parts under the car, like a transmission, exhaust, drive shaft, any of that to worry about. So all it's, it's all smooth panels. And, and we'll take you on, you know, just on basically all the way to the rest of the back of the car. And you're, you're going to see that. But what's going to be really cool is we're just going to go ahead and pull the panels off. And then you really get to see the gravy of what's underneath this car. So, all right, as we were talking about before, so we have our under tray here at the front. And really, it's straightforward. It's there for aerodynamics, but it's also felt covered. Uh, most of that is for basically noise, you know, reduction, trying to get rid of, you know, what's coming off the highway coming up to your car. So they're making your car quieter and more aerodynamic. And then we have vast tracks of battery past this. And we'll go ahead and do a real slow walk, but that's a lot of battery. There's actually uh, not only batteries on both sides, it's 400 volts worth of battery, uh, but it's also surrounded by water. Uh, so water basically fills up the channels in the front and flow to the back and cool the batteries, uh, keeping them at an optimal state of charge. And uh, you know, too cold, it's too cold. Too hot, also too hot. So you know, there's a conventional water pump in the front of the car that you know, helps keep the batteries at the optimal temperature for really what you're doing. And here we are at the back of the car. Justin, can you explain a little bit about, you know, what we're looking at here and these things? So underneath this thing is just like a conventional modern automobile. It's got regular brakes, regular control arms, but it does have these sweet covers on the lower control arms for improved aerodynamics. Also, another important feature about this car is the four jack points. And it is very important that you use those. If not, some bad things can happen. Yeah, these are made by plastic, made of plastic here. So if you are jacking up on the thing, don't jack here. You know, you're gonna crack them and it's, it's no good. Uh, but we are gonna go ahead and pull the panels off now here pretty quick. Before we do, one of the things we wanna show you is this really cool panel that sweeps to the back. Uh, super aerodynamic and the angles that it uses basically to join the air coming off the top and the sides of the car is pretty precise. And we'll show you the angles. It's, it's something kind of cool for people that enjoy aero. Uh, but with that, I guess let's go ahead and pull some panels for the folks. Yeah, let's tear it apart. All right, so we are at the back of the car as promised and we have our handy dandy angle finder back here. We are directly underneath the axle center line. And at this point of the car, it's actually fairly flat, you know, roughly 0 0.2 degrees. Uh, and then as we go farther back, it starts angling up a little bit, 2.1 degrees. We hit this plastic panel. Uh, we're at 2.2 degrees here. You'll notice the suspension is hanging down. So if the suspension was actually compressed, this control arm would be roughly flush, including this cover, you know, with the rest of this cover. So it's, you know, pretty well engineered. As we go further back, now we're up to 0.9 degree. It flattens out a little bit here due to the structure of the car. Uh, and then from here, you start sweeping up. It's 9.5 degrees, 13.3 degrees, and finally towards the tail end of this panel, we're hitting about 17.7 .7 degrees. So really what we're doing there is, you know, we're trying to get all the air to adhere, uh, you know, get closer together towards the tail end of the car. So the footprint, you know, the frontal area is less and, you know, the sides of the car, the top of the car and the bottom of the car obviously are all built you know, to increase range and increase mileage and increase top speed, as we may find out. Anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and blow these panels off and show you what's next. All right, gang, so we've got the back of the, you know, panel pulled off here and pretty conventional, but Justin, what's this? It's got an oil filter, just like a regular car. <laughs> I know, it's, it's a little crazy to see what we see or what we don't see under here. We don't see a lot of, you know, magic, nothing crazy. Uh, you know, we've got the motor back here. Uh, also, you know, so we, we talked to you about the huge battery packs, you know, basically coming from front to back. And under here, you're going to see some water lines. And these are basically, they're very, very hot now at this point. And they actually go back up the rockers and towards the front. It has a conventional water pump in the front. Battery powered, like we said earlier, just kind of regulates the temperature, not only of the batteries, but of the motor controller um, and really the electrics to it. 
Uh, but it's going to be a dream, you know, for people to work on too, because here we have, you know, 28 millimeter sway bar, conventional springs, conventional links, conventional brakes. What else do you want to say about it? Everything is attached to a subframe. This car is, like I said, it's built kind of like an early Camaro. Everything, it, it's all built together. So you have a sub, yeah, subframe, motors on it, all the suspension connects to it, and then the subframe itself connects to the body. So this thing should be a breeze to work on in, in the future when it's time to maintenance these cars. To, you know, a, a lot of problems is you have a bunch of electrical stuff to disconnect. It's not that bad on this. And it's a couple plugs and then the whole thing drops out. Right. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take you to the front of the car. It's a little bit more interesting up there. And yeah, this is pretty, it's cool. But anyway, onto the front. All right, here we are at the front of the car. We've taken the aero panel off the front, uh, the tray, whatever you want to call it. And got an oil filter. Want to explain that again? Not only does it have one oil filter, but it has two. And that's just simply an oil filter to filter the oil in the transmission because it has no engine oil. Right, right, exactly. So this one's a little bit more exciting than the back of the car. Not a lot to see back there. This one's a little bit cooler. You know, nice big beefy uh, sway bar up here, you know, but it's still at the same time, you know, conventional, you know, lower control arms here, uh, you know, normal axles, uh, normal coilovers up front. But anyway, where it does get to be kind of interesting, we have these huge battery cables back here, and we're gonna go ahead and pull the frunk cover off. Frunk, get that one. And uh, we're gonna show you a little bit about what's above it, but what's kind of cool is right over here where you look back, the water pump is actually sending uh, water down through these hoses here, and it's actually going into the front of both cells and traveling to the back. And uh, with that, are you ready to uh, go ahead and you know, peel off the, the front cover. Yeah, let's pop it off and show the people. Rock and roll. All right, here we go. All right, gang, here we are at the front of the car. Uh, we wanted to show you a little bit about whatever is under the hood here. It's actually kind of a cool hood. Uh, when we lift it up, you'll find a trunk, a frunk. Um, it, it's, it's pretty handy, not much to see here, but it's just a lot of more, you know, storage area. Uh, if you need to get at anything, there's not a lot that you really need to get at, but if you need to do washer fluid, for instance, that's right here. Pulling the entire cover out of this thing is really simple. There's about eight bolts to the whole thing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull it apart here real quick. So after that covers off, you get access to some basic stuff like your battery, brake fluid, washer fluid. But um, other than that, that's, you, that's all you can get to from here. And then the front panel comes off after that. All right, let's see the next one. All right, and th this is pretty cool. I mean, because we're used to seeing cars that are just an absolute mess under the hood where you can't even identify what's there. Everything here is really, really straightforward and easy to get to. It does have some parts that we're very used to seeing. Uh, you have a radiator. Why do we have a radiator? Well, yeah, it's not cooling an engine anymore, but what it does do is cool the battery packs. It has a, a water tank here and it has the hoses basically flowing everywhere, you know, through the various circuits to, you know, cool the batteries, the motor, the motor controller, uh, you know, things that need to be cooled are all done through a very, very conventional radiator. Uh, there is an air to water cooler up there, uh, AC. Uh, we have a electric AC in this car. Uh, again, we're gonna point back to a 12 volt battery. Why does the most advanced car in the world have a lead acid 12 volt battery? Well, there are still 12 volt things inside the car. You know, the, the, the chargers, you know, as a for instance. Uh, so why is it lead acid? That's another question. Expense, we are gonna be getting rid of that heavy lead acid battery and replacing it with a very nice, lightweight, high-tech Braille uh, lithium battery. And the reason why is there are, there are some cars like this, but the entire car one of the great things about it is the center of gravity is very low to the ground. When we have the battery, one of the heaviest things in the entire car, high up, it has a tendency to flop around in cornering. So anything that we can do to lower the heavy parts and or you know, make the heavy parts lighter is gonna just add to handling and you know, that's, that's kind of a no-brainer. Um, anything else of interest here? Like I said, we can just kind of see some other things that we saw from the bottom. You can see the top of your, the, the electric motor. You have your pow electric power rack. Um, and like Brian had said, everything, all the accessories are all have an electric motor to drive them. Not like your conventional automobile where you have a whole accessory drive system on the front of the engine. Yeah, no more belts to break. 
Yeah, just nice, simple, easy, easy to work on. And uh, like Brian had said, it's, everything's on a subframe. So the car is super easy to work on and should be easy to work on in the future. I know we've noticed as it has kind of like a tie-in bar between the strut towers to stiffen the car up. And I don't know, there's, there's a lot going on under here, but not really. Right, exactly. Well, it's gonna be good for Tesla owners because you know, the easier it is for a mechanic to go in and replace parts or the easier it is for us, you know, the less expense there is in maintaining the car. So please hit like and subscribe and you're gonna see lots of videos, ring the bell, all that business. And of course, everything is here at Summit Racing. You're gonna see articles on this and videos and uh, yeah, just keep watching. We're gonna have it. Yeah, so we're Brian and Justin with Summit Racing. Thanks for watching. See you guys.